Hi everybody, this is Harmony with Harmony Stitches. Thanks so much for joining me for another weekly update. I surely do appreciate everyone that has subscribed, liked, or commented on any of my videos. If you're new here or actually returning, I hope that you find um, some inspiration to work on your crafts or try something new. Um, today I actually have some cross stitch and knitting for you. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in. Um, this week's whips, of course, was the secret stitch. For those of you that are new, I am doing a secret stitch for my husband for Father's Day, and he is downstairs watching TV, so I try to lower my volume when I talk about it. So you might have to increase your volume on your device just for a moment. The secret stitch is Bigfoot Bunch by Plum Street Samplers, and I really was hoping for a finish this week, and I'm this close. So, so, so close. I have the centers of the big persimmon flowers. I have three of the little tiny ones and a bee. That's it. I got the big foot done. So here we are. Look at those. I was able to complete those because they went on a little um, weekend trip. And I want to see if I can show you. Can you see that the baby here is stitched one over one. It is not focusing very well, but I think that you can see it. And then the center of the eyes, or the, the face on the big one, is also over one. And then this is the mom up in the corner. It looks like she has a little bit of makeup on. Of course, it's not focusing on her either. But I am so happy with this and we're almost finished. I am stitching this on 28 count Monaco in a mystery color. It's um, antique white, off white, something white. I, I am stitching with some of the called for, called for colors. Um, most of the called for colors. I think the only one that I have changed so far is the cinnamon toast, which is the, um, it's, for the feet, the hands, and the faces. Um, the cinnamon toast was a little too pink for my liking, um, so I just changed it. And I'm using, what am I using? Mm. <laughs> I didn't write on it. 842. So this is what it looks like. It has a little bit of a pink in there, but it's mostly like tan, creamy color. So I'm using 842 in case you were wondering. Um, instead of black coffee, which black coffee is used for the border and the inside of the flowers, it's black. Um, I'm using coal by Weeks Dye Works just because I had some left over. And I think, oh, and for pine needles, which is the border of all of the leaves, I'm using 3011, I believe. I stole it out of a different project because it didn't work in that project and it needs to be replaced and I don't know where, oh, sorry. It's a hot mess in this bag right now because sometimes I just have to chuck the stuff back in it um, and hurry up and zip it up and throw it back down on the in my spot. So it, it's 3011. So if you have any questions about the floss that I am using, um, then go ahead and comment below or shoot me a message at harmonystitches21 at gmail.com and I will, um, I'll get back to you. Okay, so the next is the Alice in Wonderland Sal by Owl Forest Embroidery. I thought that I was making good progress on this, but I really don't know if I am. I am almost done with part three. Part four came out on Friday. Today's Sunday. It came out on Friday. Because they were gone, I was working on the secret stitch um, and something else that I'm showing you in a minute. So I didn't get to start. So here's part three. Part three is up here with the white rabbit and the border. That border goes all the way across the top of the project and I just got started. And then I noticed as I was stitching that I accidentally pulled 300, DMC 300, which is the brown used here. I, I must not have had my light on and it looked like the 221 here, the red. So I had to pick those out. But I'm almost halfway across with the border. 
I'll keep working on that. So this is basically part one through three. Part four is down here and it's Alice falling down the hole. So I think that's pretty cute because I was asking my daughter, I'm like, okay, what character does she meet after the white rabbit? I said, is it the flowers? Is it the caterpillar? Like, what did she meet next? And so we were debating that. I've never read the book, and it's been a while since I've watched the Disney version of the movie. So we were debating that, but then I was wrong when it came out, and I said, of course, she can't meet another character until she falls down the hole. So um, I'm excited to get started on that, and I will, I will start it. Tomorrow I will finish Secret Stitch and then I'll have time to get started with this and a wheel spin. So I did a wheel spin and I'll enter it here for a new start and it came up Weimariner. And this one, oops, I forgot to put some floss away. Oh, sorry. Alice in Wonderland Sal is stitched on 18 count Ada that I tea and coffee dyed myself. I'm using all of the called for floss except for the white. It was actually supposed to be 712, but it was too light, so I changed it to B5200 by DMC. Okay, so my new spin came up Weimariner. My husband bought me this for, I think, Christmas. Christmas. It's on Etsy. Um, I will link her below. She has a shop. She has um, quite a few um, dog um, patterns and they all say like if it's this one says Weimariner mom on the bottom um, I don't know if I'm gonna stitch that or if I'll chart it with his name our Weimariner's name is Dexter so um, I'm going to stitch this on this piece of Ada it's 18 count and I just measured it it's wrinkly it needs to be ironed I just measured it before I started this video I did a fabric calculator and then measured it it should be perfect. It should be the perfect size. It's a scrap that I received from my online retailer for the Monaco. She always includes a scrap fabric so that way you can um, try different things out or look at different things or maybe she uses it for filler really. I don't really know what her what her, the purpose is there. So I have all of the colors. So we have DMC 301, 310, 451, 452. 453 so see there are shades of gray and then we have 762 779 sorry they're sticking together they've been in a floss away bag 938 3860 so these are shades of brown and except for the 762 that's like a light silvery color um 3861 which goes with the other browns 3866 and 3371, which of course we know is the black brown by DMC. Um, if you don't know, Weimariners are kind of a, there's two different shades really, or almost three. They're called silver, blue, and now there's a taupe. And so, but even so, the silver and the taupe are kind of similar and they're shades of gray and brown. The blue is actually almost black and they're so pretty, but ours is a taupe. So this is going to be perfect. Um, so that, that Ada is 18 count. I don't know if I said that before. So it's gonna be this nice, cute little small, um, let's see, I have the, sti the stitch size here somewhere. The stitch size is actually going to be five by seven. So it's going to be little. And then the fabric will be nine by 11. And this piece is actually just like 11, 11. So it's actually going to be pretty perfect enough for me to frame or do something fun with. I'm not sure how I will finish it, but I'm, I am actually quite happy that that came up in the wheel spin because he's been wanting me to start that. My husband, he's been wanting me to start that since I got it. And I got all the threads for it when DM, when DMC was on sale at Joanne's. Um, but as you know, I had to quit my wheel spins because I had all those knitted dishcloth orders and then the secret stitch. So I am excited to get to that. It should be fairly quick, but it has a lot of back stitching too to make some definition in the face and the paws and stuff. But it's okay, I'll get it done. Okay, my last whip for the week, of course, is pandemic. I was able to finish before May ended, I was able to finish page 14. And I'm this close to finishing page 13, and I'm so super excited. 
Okay, so this is page 15 over here. And then that diamond here with the deer and the dog, that's the start of page 14. And it ends right here in the center. And then, so then from here over to here is page 13. So I only have this little bit here in the corner of this of this banner, um, that, that banner here. And I am finished with page 13. And I think because I already have the frame set, here i think i'm going to start working on the upper pages before i move the frame again um i really don't know if that will be the best the best and fastest way but i just figure since i already have the frame set there i'll i'll start working across a little bit more i'll finish all the way over to the left of the frame and that will be page 13 and some of 12. so then when i do move the frame i'll actually be able to finish page 12 pretty quickly um so that's my plan. I may totally change my mind. We will see. Okay, so the last thing I have to talk about is the Summer Sock Camp with the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel. Um, her actual name is Kay. Um, she started Summer Sock Camp last year, so this is year number two. It launched on June 1st, which was, what, Tuesday? Um, and the goal is just to, to knit socks. Um, she said if you want to challenge yourself, choose a different way to knit socks or um, a different technique for the heel or if you usually do cuff down, how about try toe up, something like that. So my plan was I really love using the small circular needles and I received a set of Haya Haya and this is the size 2. Um... I received, the set came with size one, two, and three with a little bag, a knitting gauge, and some notions. So my husband and daughter gave this to me, um, I think for Christmas two years ago. And I just love these little high, high, nine inch. So they are super cute in there. You do have to change the way that you hold them with your regular knitting needles. I think we tend to get like a, a white knuckle steering wheel grip on the tips. And we don't have to do that with these. These you just gently hold them and they work beautifully. So the, the high highs have these green cables and they actually, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but they have the name and the size etched in. So you, I know my camera's not going to focus on it, but it is in there. So these, I do recommend these. They're, um... This is a size three and the tips aren't as pointy as the size one or two, but I do like them for socks. And it is, I learned socks on DPNs with Marley Bird. She did my first socks um, knit along a couple years ago. And I didn't join then, but I did it afterwards with DPNs. Um, she does it with Chic Sheep by Marley Bird. It's a superwash merino. Um, so I did learn how to do on that and I do recommend if you've never knit socks before try doing a worsted weight pair first because your hands are probably already if you use worsted weight you might already be used to that um, weight of yarn and it might be easier for you to maneuver especially if you're trying DPNs. DPNs are not as scary as what you would think. When I started with them I'm like oh my gosh I thought this was super crazy and it's not. It's you get into a rhythm and you and watch her knit with them and then give it a try. Otherwise, I did um, hear about these um, nine inch circulars from somewhere on YouTube and I'm like, I wanna give it a try. I added them to my wish list and here they came. So I did start my sock on June 1st. On Friday morning, I was knitting away and my challenge for myself was to try a different ribbing. My shirt is wrinkly, don't mind that. Um, I don't like ribbing because I do not like to purl and I don't believe I'm alone in this um, But I wanted to try a new ribbing and I wanted to try the knit one purl one tw Twisted so what it is is you the knit the knit stitches through the back loop and it twists them and then you purl normal so I wanted to give that a try and also Kay had said from the crazy sock lady that she when she's using nine inch circular she actually goes down a size needle because she feels that her gauge is a little bit too big and um 
and I thought, well, that may be why my socks are a little bit too big in the heel area. Let's try going down. So I was knitting on this US size one and I got the 20 rounds of ribbing done and I got about 20 rounds of the leg done. And I said, you know, this looks pretty tiny. And my husband said, yeah, it looks pretty small. So I tried to put it on and I'm like, yeah, sure enough, this is not going to fit over my ankle, over my heel. So I ripped it out and I started over. Um, and I started over Friday morning. Today's Sunday. It's about uh, 8.30 in the morning. So this is what I have so far of my first sock. This is Bridiculous Yarn in that um, Hocus Pocus colorway. It's a quote by Winifred. I did ask my daughter and she right off the bat said, yeah, that's from Hocus Pocus. It has all the colors in it, which I think is beautiful and just perfect for summer. I have a stitch marker there and I don't know. I, I can take that out. Um, I was, that's 25 rows of the leg. I was just keeping track of where I was at. Um, so I ended up doing a two by two rib because I have a feeling that my tight knit gauge, I have a tight knit gauge anyways, is probably not a good idea unless I go up a size in my needle, which I'm going to ask questions about that. I mean, that's what so summer sock camp is all about is to get all your questions answered so you can make perfect fitting socks. Um, and I did a slip stitch heel flap and then my heel turn and I am, oh, I don't know, 22 rows or so. This, um, where am I at? This stitch marker here marks the first row after my gusset decreases were finished. So that's how I count mine. If you go to the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel and you watch her tutorials on any of her socks, she has vanilla socks, which this is a vanilla sock, just plain stockinette. She has a pattern for that and tutorials on how to do it on DPNs, nine inch circular and magic loop. But then she just released on how to do it on Haya Haya or Addy, Haya Haya Flyers or Addy Flexi Flips. Or, and then she also released one how to do it on two circular needles instead of a magic loop on one circular needle. She counts her rows differently than I do. And that's okay, it still works out in the end. But this is how I count. My, I do my gusset decreases, I add a stitch marker in the first row after my decreases, and then I count my rows, measure and count my first sock, and then I duplicate that on the second sock. So I think last week, um, the Crafty Cataloger here on YouTube commented that her second sock always gets messed up. My suggestion to her was try doing two at a time, and you can do that two ways. You can do it on, you get, you do a magic loop on a really long needle so that way you can have both of them going at the same time and you do, Kay the Crazy Sock Lady has a YouTube channel tutorial on that so go check it out. But you basically knit both of the socks at the same time. Or you can get two sets of the needles that you prefer, DPNs, 9 inch circular, whatever, however you want to make it, and you do them at tandem. So you could do, okay, I'm going to do the cuff on this one, then I'll do the cuff on that one. And you do, that way it's fresh in your mind and you can do them the same way. So if you want 20, 20 rows or two inches or whatever you want on the cuff, then you do the one and you duplicate it on the second. And then you do that with every single set. You can do then, the, I did on mine, I did 40 rows for the leg. Kay usually do, does 50 or 60, but I have small feet and small legs. So if I did a 60, 60 row, I mean, just imagine that this would be, you know, take half of it and then put it up here. You know, like that would be a really long leg of a sock for me. It's almost going to be a knee high because I have really short legs. So then you, you take however many rows you want on the leg. You knit those on sock one and then knit them on sock two. And then you knit your heel flap and then you knit your heel flap and then your heel turn, then your heel turn. And then that way everything is exactly the same and you can keep, track of everything. My other suggestion was just keep really, really good notes. Write down what you've done. Um, even when you're picking up your gusset stitches and how you're picking them up, you want to take good notes on how you've done it or you want to do them at the same time so that way it's really, really fresh in your mind. Um, so I actually don't really like picking up stitches because I always feel that they look funny. But when I pick up stitches in my sock, I 
love the way that this looks with the slip stitch heel and my stitches picked up. Now this side looks a little funny and I think it's because of the color yarn that was used to pick up, you know, that was next up in the rotation. But I really like them. And no one is going to see where you picked up the stitches. So if they're, this is what um, Trillic Craft here on YouTube said once, um, on her YouTube. If someone's that close to my socks to, to criticize, I'm just going to kick them. So, and I thought that was really funny because like no one is going to be that close to your sock to say, hmm, you didn't really pick up the stitches that well on that one, did you? So I suggest that you give it a try. Hop on over to her YouTube channel. She actually has a video that's all about summer sock camp. Some, some of the information is kind of irrelevant now because it has started already. Um, but go ahead and check it out. If you're on Ravelry, go ahead and join her group. I'm sure that she has a link there. I'll add a link down below too. It's just a lot of fun. She said that camp runs until July 31st, but the knit along portion runs until August 31st. I really don't understand what the difference is because this is my first time participating, but you get an entry into the drawing for every pair of socks that you make. So, if you like making socks or you like knitting or you want a challenge and you want to try something new, go ahead and join. So again, this is ridiculous. I don't know what's happening here. My cake is blowing up on me and that's the bottom. So I don't even have a chance to save it. I don't know what's happening. Uh, it's ridiculous yarns. I got it at my local yarn shop. When I did get it, she had a couple more. So if that's up your alley, I will go ahead and link her below. You can call her up or shoot her an email and she will help you out. So other than that, there is nothing else that I have to talk to you about. The reason why I'm um, filming a little bit early is because it's supposed to be hot, hot, hot here, um, mid to high 90s today. And I'm upstairs with no air conditioning. So we're going to, I'm going to go back down. We're going to take a walk while it's really cool outside still. And then we're going to chill in front of the fans and the air conditioning that we have downstairs. So I hope that you stay cool. I hope that you get some project time in and just relax on the rest of your Sunday. And I'll see you next week. Bye.